Welcome to another edition of Maryland's Missing and the Murdered. My name is Kara Stone. Here's a little information about this channel. Maryland's Missing and the Murdered is a weekly YouTube channel, and this week we are covering the disappearance and murder of Susan Hurley Harrison. Susan Hurley was born in 1942. Her first marriage was to lawyer Tom Osley. They shared two sons, John born in 1970 and Nick born in 1975. Nothing I researched stated that their marriage had issues. However, in 1979, Susan met Jim Harrison, another lawyer she met through her husband, Tom. The Harrison and Osleys became friends, but that all unraveled one night during a double date when Jim announced to Tom, quote, I love your wife and I'm going to marry her, end quote. Within a year, both couples separated and eventually divorced their respective spouses. Tom and Susan shared custody of their sons, John and Nick. Jim and Susan became a couple, and on December 2, 1988, they were married at the Baltimore County Courthouse. Susan's friends at that time knew abuse was already occurring. Sources claim that in December 1988, after the marriage ceremony, Susan broke her arm. Susan told friends that Jim did it. However, Jim claimed that she fell off her bike. Over the years, police had been called to the Harrison residence many times for various injuries, bruises, broken bones, etc. In 1993 alone, there were two protect protection orders taken out with Susan violating them by going back to Jim. Hospital records recorded on September 27, 1993, noted Susan with a swollen black eye and bruises on her forehead. She told hospital staff that her husband Jim punched her. Jim advised the police that none of it was true, that Susan was a manic depressive, an alcoholic, and would self-injure. Susan would file charges, but drop them. Susan's sons, Nick and John, disputed any claims that Jim has made, as Nick has witnessed Jim abusing his mother. On December 29, 1993, Susan showed up at a friend's door at 3 a.m. without a coat or shoes. Susan told her that Jim threw her into the Christmas tree and she escaped the house after he fell asleep. In the following days, Jim and Susan separated. Susan's friend helped her rent a house in Ruxton, Maryland, and in January 1994, Susan opened Shady Lady, a boutique that sold handcrafted lampshades. Unfortunately, Susan and Jim got back together and the fighting resumed. On August 3, 1994, Susan's sons, Nick and John, met with their mother. They told her that enough was enough and she needed to choose between Jim or them. She then made the decision to leave Jim for good. Susan made plans to go to Boston on October 6th with her son Nick. The day before she was scheduled to go to Boston on August the 5th, she went to see Jim. That day, her son Nick had arrived at his mom's house. Nick noticed that the house was unlocked. Her 1992 green Saab convertible was gone and keys were on the kitchen table. Nick stayed at the house all day and into the night, but eventually went back home. The following day, on August the 6th, the boys called police when they did not hear from their mother. The police questioned Jim about Susan's disappearance. Jim stated that he did see Susan on August the 5th, but she left angry. The police searched Jim's home, but found that it was cleaned by a new housekeeper soon after Susan's disappearance. Jim also underwent a polygraph, which he failed. Although the police told him that Susan was missing, when friends told him that she was missing, Jim acted surprised. He also changed his story to where he was the day that she went missing. Jim Harrison seemed to have a problem with alcohol which was ironic because he blamed Susan for alcohol issues. What made that even more interesting was that Jim Harrison was arrested for public intoxication twice 
and attempted to fight the police both times. After three weeks, Susan Saab was found at Reagan International Airport outside of Washington, D.C., which is 70 miles from Susan's home. The car entered the parking lot on August the 6th, 1994. The keys were in the ignition and the car had an almost full tank of gas. The police started to interview family, friends, and looked into Susan's medical records all of which supported Susan's claim of violence. The police questioned a utility worker who was working the night of August the 5th into the 6th near Jim's home. The utility worker was working on the lines and noticed a car leaving Jim's home around 4 a.m. The worker thought it was a green sob. On November 22nd, 1994, Susan's son, John, legally filed for guardianship of his mother's belongings due to the fact that he was suspicious of Jim's involvement in his mother's disappearance. On November 29, 1996, Susan's remains were found in a shallow grave in Wolfsville, Maryland, about 50, 50 miles away from her home. The medical examiner determined homicide due to skull injuries. Jim was questioned about his familiarity with that area, and he stated he had never been there. Thank However, you. a witness told police that Jim and Susan had visited that area in the past. In July 1997, Susan's sons, John and Nick, filed a wrongful death suit against Jim Harrison for $17 million. In August 1999, it was settled privately. Unfortunately, Maryland's Attorney General closed the homicide case due to, quote, insufficient evidence, end quote. And in the fall of 2007, Jim Harrison <laughs> passed away. Thank you for joining me this week. We will be back in two weeks after the Christmas and New Year holiday. If you would like to get in touch with me, please email me at marylandsmissing at gmail.com. Music is by Silent Vengeance. Sources will be listed in the outro. Be kind to one another. You never know what will happen tomorrow.